Hey everybody, it's Jason Hallman from Torque Performance Television. I'm here with the Motor Witch, Danny Wilson, and the Alloy Art Machine. Um, we were talking a little bit about, this has got your cylinders on it. You, you actually built this entire engine from the ground up, right? Yeah, as far as the design of the cylinders and all that go, correct. I designed the cylinders, the piston is my design, so sleeves, all that stuff. And these are the leading edge, these are the same cylinders though that you would buy from, right from you, right? Correct, company. yeah, these, these are definitely publicly available. This is not some special one-off kit that we did for the Alloy Art bike. Um, this is one of the bolt-on kits, so it makes a four and a half inch stroke, a 1.0. It takes it from 114 to 129. Okay, and so you have it in. I've been kind of following you, you know, the last couple of years since since you brought the cylinders mm -hmm. out, and you have a kit for the 107 that takes it up to 125, like 125 right? Yep. It's a little bit more than than the 124. Yep. And then, does your kit too? I mean, do you? I know that somebody can send you their engine and kind of get the whole thing done, right? Yes. But you also kind of. You know, you pick the camshaft and help people with that too. Right, it, how, what are the levels of the, the leading edge performance kits? Yeah. So right now, what's readily available, we've got the bolt-on kit to make a 125, we've got a bolt-on kit to make a 129, and we've got a kit that'll convert either of them into a 131 with a crank. What I want everybody to kind of take away from, from this uh -huh. thing that's going into BRL, like I was talking earlier, you know, a year and a half ago, they kind of started talking about this, yep. and then all the smack talk and started online where this is the dumbest thing they ever heard of, and then some of the most prominent people in our industry said that it was the craziest thing they had ever heard of. Right. And then now you have these bikes, you know, there's there's eight bikes in here that are all yeah. competitive bikes mm -hmm. and they're all making big horsepower. Yeah. And they basically put these things on a diet. What did they not do to these things? Like, you, you know, you're pretty intimately involved in these. These have yeah, the stock frame, I mean, right? Stock geometry. Yeah, the frames are essentially unmolested. Um, basically, it's just a matter of weight being shaved and suspension being upgraded. On, this, on the alloy art bike, we've got a lot of supplemental oil coolers. Mm -hmm. Try and keep the temps down since they're running them so hard. I mean, obviously, these weren't intended to be put on a racetrack right. out of the box. Well, so they so, say, and yeah. we're proving that so, wrong, right? Guys so like now, you. we're trying to find loopholes in ways to maintain everything as stock as possible but still drop oh, oil man. temperatures make it so that we can put them on the track and just beat them to death and have them stay together what's a good oil temperature that's something that someone at home a lot of people have an oil temperature gauge on there right where, yeah, where do you I mean, want to keep it around? oil temperatures kind of fluctuate i'm in phoenix I mean, right i really concern myself more with head temps i mean okay. like in phoenix in the summertime when it's 115 and you're riding on the freeway i mean you see head temps stay like high twos low threes you know, um, when you're running 80 down the interstate, it's 115 right. outside. Um, you know, this one on the track yesterday was up at like 338, Oof. which is a little hot, but it's it's not it's not brake shit hot. So it's right. you know it's still runnable. Are you are you guys are you guys playing with different types of oils and different types of you know? Do you, do you use an ester based oil or do you use a, a category four oil? I actually personally, in my personal stuff, I use conventional oil because I change my oil all the time. Right. I'm also not racing the bike. Sure. You know, I'm on the road. So right. um, and these guys are running a full synthetic, trying to keep the temps down and whatnot. Um, this bike's done really well, all things considered. And the cylinder design helps keep the combustion chamber temps down and it keeps the cylinder itself cooler than a stock design does. Yeah, because when those came out, a lot of people were like instantly like, well, don't you need more fins to keep oh, it yeah, cool? Yeah, no, and no, you have actually more surface area, right? Yeah, to the, dissipate the, the heat. Yeah, the heat factory was full send when I launched those. <laughs> um, I mean, it is obviously a vast departure. The biggest difference is that cylinder actually ends up being an active cooling system when the motorcycle's in motion. So nice. the air passing over the cylinder becomes turbulent, the turbulent air extracts the heat out of the base material. Whereas with a traditional design, the cylinders dissipate heat, and then the air that's passing by is simply pushing away dissipated heat. Gotcha, yeah, so, so it's like simple physics, but not simple physics. Right, yeah, it's basically just the product of an airflow study that I converted into a motorcycle cylinder. Really. Awesome, well cool, this is Danny Wilson from, he's the Motor Witch from Leading Edge HP. What is the site that they can follow you at? The um, best way is following on Instagram with MotorWitch and Leading Edge HP, um, and then the website is leadingedgehp.com. Cool, man. I appreciate you. Guys.